Hi, I'm Scott Shepard, photo media instructor at Lake Area Technical Institute, Watertown, South Dakota. And this is a tutorial that will show you how to use the places function in Apple's Aperture 3.0. You probably have discovered by this point that uh, Aperture is a very powerful tool for uh, organizing and tagging and finding photos. But it's, and it, it's also a good tool for editing photos. But one of the features that is um, very powerful is its places function. And I'm going to click on the button in the upper uh, menu here called places. And you'll see a map of the world when, uh, when I do that. And in this particular case, the map of the world has pins all over it. And all of those pins uh, indicate places where I have taken photos and then have tagged them with the location in which they were taken. Now, I should say that some devices, for example, my iPod Touch, automatically um, will tag a photo because it records the latitude and longitude when I click the shutter. How does it do that? Well, in this particular case, it just uses the IP address uh, to do that. Anyway, we're going to go back to places and look at the map of the world. And uh, what we're seeing are, as I was pointing out, all of the places where I've taken photos. Um, so let's talk about how you would tag a particular photo. Let's take this photo that I took at, um, uh, on top of Mauna Kea in Hawaii. And I want to make sure that it's highlighted. And then I'm going to click the Places button to get the map of the world. And then up here in the search bar, I have a place where I can put in what it is that I'm searching for. Now, by the way, this assumes that you have an internet connection. Uh, this won't work if you don't. And I go M A U Mauna Kea, and uh, right away it's found the uh, Mauna Kea in its database. And if I click on that, it takes me right away to Mauna Kea. Now, that pin is the general location of Mauna Kea. But what I want to do is take the photo and drag it to the approximate place where I was standing when I took the photo. And I was pretty much right on this road. And I'm going to drop the pin. And now you're going to notice that this photo has a pin on it and a red pin that corresponds to its location on the map. Okay, And I can do that this with yet another photo. We're going to take this photo of the um, famous pyramid entrance of the Louvre in Paris. Go back to the map, click on Places. This time I'm going to go up here where I typed in Mauna Kea. And this time I'm going to put in Paris and France. And I'll click on this. Now, what this will do is it will take me to uh, a general map of Paris, bird's eye view. I'm going to zoom in. Now, I know where I took this photo. It was in the courtyard of the Louvre Museum, right there. And in fact, I know where I was standing when I took this photo. There's the pyramid from above. Uh, zoom in just a little bit more. There's the pyramid right there. And I know that I was standing right about here when I took that photo. And so now that photo is tagged. So now I've got the Mauna Kea photo. I want to see the location. I actually have nine photos that are tagged uh, Hawaii. What happens if you have a whole set of photos that you want to tag simultaneously? Because this would be pretty labor intensive. Uh, and I'm going to take this photo and a few others like it um, that I took at the um, Chicago Art Institute in Chicago, Illinois. So I'm going to go back to places, go back to the map. I'm going to put in Chicago. I'm try Chicago Art Institute, see if it can find it. Art Institute of Chicago right there. So I'm going to click on that. It's going to take me to the art museum, bird's eye view again. And uh, I know that these lions are on the front step. Uh, you can't see it real well. Now I'm going to, I'm going to select all four of these lion photos. And I'm going to take them and I'm going to drag it 
right there. More or less, this is where I was. And I'm going to click uh, Done on that. And now these four photos, if I click on that, it will just automatically uh, weed out all the other photos in the collection and find those four photos. Now, I have one more uh, thing that I would like to demonstrate. Well, you might be thinking, well, why would I want to tag photos other than travel photos? And the answer is, is that as you start to do photography, let's say, for example, wedding photography or portrait photography that takes you out of your hometown, it might be kind of nice to be able to find photos based on the location. So, for example, let's take a photo that I took at a wedding in Wilmer, uh, Minnesota, and we're going to tag it. So I'm going to zoom in on Wilmer, Minnesota. Uh, I went to um, map view, which by the way you can do, rather than looking at it as a picture, you can go to road. Um, but it's kind of nice uh, to be able to see because I know that right there is the church. And I'm going to take these two photos of Jenny and Michael, and I'm going to drop the pen right on the church. I was inside the church when I took the photo and click done. And now that's tagged. So let me recap. I'm going to go back to places. I'm going to go out to the whole world. Notice that the pins that are there indicate where I've taken the photos. If I click on 36 cities, I actually should be able to find Wilmer, for example, and click on that. And it will zoom in to the pictures that I took in Wilmer, Minnesota. Um, and you didn't notice it probably, but it very quickly sorted through all of the photos that I had. So I'm going to try that again. Instead of Wilmer, let's go to um, Paris. I have to clear the search there. And I'll try that one more time. Go to Paris, the Louvre. And what do you know? There's the photo and in my collection it shows up down here. So it's a very powerful function both for finding photos and also for uh, locating where you took the photo. Uh, could be really handy. Hope this helps.